Good evening and a warm welcome to Channel One News Hour on this ninth day of November 2020. A very busy day. Hope you've had a fruitful day. Time for a comprehensive news briefing right here on KBC Channel One. On a day that President Uhuru Kenyatta asked the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution not to relent while prosecuting cases involving misuse of public funds. Of course, we have that plus the latest on the COVID statistics plus business and sports. Welcome. Nineteen reported dead in the last 24 hours as 756 new coronavirus cases are confirmed in Kenya. Paying the price of disobedience, 38 people are jailed for 90 days in Kiambu for flouting COVID-19 regulations. It's generally very basic issues uh, that has no controversy or does not disadvantage anybody in the country. It's just more about our issues that we feel needed to be highlighted and that has been well taken. And seeking a piece of the national cake, pastoralist leaders vow to support the BBI report if it addresses their concerns. Simon Karoda is our sign language interpreter for this evening. My name is Bentro Njue at Bentro Njue at KBC Channel One. And remember, you can watch us from wherever you are via our social media platform, uh, which include YouTube, Facebook, and of course on Twitter. Straight to the news, the country on Monday recorded 756 COVID-19 positive cases from a sample size of 4,316 in the last 24 hours. Unfortunately, 19 other patients succumbed to the virus within the same period, bringing the total fatalities to 1,130. So far, the country's caseload stands at 63,244. The new cases coming even as frantic efforts continue in Migori to trace those who came into contact with the head worker who had earlier escaped from a quarantine center after testing positive for the virus. On the 239th day since the first COVID-19 case was confirmed in the country, 756 people have tested positive from the virus from a sample size of 4,316 in the last 24 hours. Currently, the country's case load stands at 63,244. Nairobi County is still recording high numbers with the 371 cases out of the 756 recorded on Monday, followed by Mombasa at 82 cases. At the same time, the number of fatalities from COVID-19 is on the rise after 19 patients succumbed to the virus, bringing the total fatalities to 1,130. 728 patients were discharged over the same period, 645 from home-based care program, while 83 were in various hospitals. Total recoveries now stand at 42,659. Currently, there are 1,331 patients admitted in various health facilities across the country. 59 patients are on intensive care unit, with 16 on high dependency unit. The latest COVID-19 statistics in the country were released on a day. Nakuru County Assembly was mourning the death of Hell's Gate Ward representative John Njuguna Njenga. The MCA is reported to have passed on Monday afternoon after a short illness while undergoing treatment at Nakuru Nursing Home. Condoling with the family, county leaders raised the alarm over increasing cases of COVID-19 in the county as they warned of more stringent measures. So it's a sad day as a Nakuru County Assembly fraternity to announce that this afternoon we lost one of our members of county assembly uh, who was through a short illness. As a county in consultation with our public health team, we will be uh, making uh, more restrictions in consultations also with the national government. And therefore on Thursday, we will make an announcement on new containment measures for Nakuru that will affect uh, businesses and other areas of operation. Elsewhere in Migori County, authorities are trying to trace a health worker who reportedly escaped from an isolation center where he had been quarantined after testing positive for COVID-19. 
over fears of stigmatization. The 38-year-old is said to have fled from Makalda Sub-County Hospital, which is the quarantine center in Migori County, to his rural home within Nyatike Sub-County. He was, however, traced and taken back to the facility as officials search for his contacts. Ukisikia tifulani yako na corona, that does not mean that the guy is going to die. We have seen also a lot of uh, uh, cases that have recovered, isn't it? So, any form of discrimination, watch at work a kando kidogo. We've been engaging with the community. Our public health officers will be offering psychosocial support so that we accept the way it is. And so far, I want to report that a number of people have been evacuated to a treatment center. They are all asymptomatic. So, there's no cause for alarm. Come, Chemenza, for Channel One News. Elsewhere, 38 people have been sentenced to three months in prison by a thicker court after they pleaded guilty of flouting COVID-19 protocols issued by the Ministry of Health. Thika resident magistrate Oscar Wanyaga gave the accused an option to pay a fine of 5,000 shillings or face 90 days in prison. This group of people was arrested in various parts of Kiambu County for flouting guidelines issued by the state to combat the spread of COVID-19. Some were arrested for not wearing face masks while others were nabbed for contravening curfew hours. Among them was this mother with a newborn infant who was however pardoned by resident magistrate Oscar Wanyaga. <laughs> All suspects pleaded guilty for breaching COVID-19 protocols and curfew order contrary to order 3 of the Public Health Order 2020 as read with section 8, subsection 6 of the Public Order Act Cap 53, Laws of Kenya. Meanwhile, in Muranga, 23 people were arrested among them border border riders for failing to put on face mask and not observing social distancing rule, while three bars were closed for selling liquor to customers before set hours. Muranga East Deputy County Commissioner Virginia Gidumbe confirmed that many people have not been observing COVID-19 rules, which has provoked the security personnel to take action. Leo, tulikuwa tukiakikisha zile amuri ambazo zilitolewa juu ya ugonjwa wa COVID-19 kila mtu amezifuata kwa hii tauni ya Muranga na sio Muranga tu pekee hata vitongoji zake Muranga East sisi kazi yetu ile kubwa si kushika watu hata ingawa tuko na watu 23 tumepeleka polisi tuko namba tatu ambazo tumekuta zikikeuka sheria na wote tumewapeleka polisi na zile mbaa zilikuwa azifuati sheria hatutazirundishia license tena she said the operation will continue until the pandemic is contained. Kwa hivyo na muhimu ni sisi wenyewe kama administrators tukishirikiana na National Police Service kuendeleza hii msako na kuwaelimisha hasa umuhimu wa, wa kuangalia eh, hii sheria hizi sheria. <laughs> matters now and the Ministry of Education is in the process of coming up with a new education calendar that takes into consideration the lost 2020 education calendar ahead of the January 2021 full school reopening. Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha who was in Mombasa said key stakeholders are in serious consultations to ensure a clear recovery strategy for the education sector that will not disadvantage the learners. With the government only allowing learners in grade 4, class 8 and form 4 to report to school, the ministry is burning the midnight oil on how the lost 2020 education calendar will be addressed. Speaking in Mombasa on Monday on the sidelines of their Commission for Science, Technology and Innovation meeting, Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha said key stakeholders and technocrats in the education sector are cracking their brains to come up with a plan that will address the missed 2020 education calendar. It's a process that is ongoing when we are ready. You know, we really, we really have to go and sit down and crack the nuts. Yes. Then we will come back to you. 
The CS downplayed teachers' concerns that some learners from poor backgrounds still report to school without face masks, putting the lives of teachers at risk of contracting COVID-19, saying head teachers should take responsibility and assist such learners. Every student must wear masks. That was my instruction. It is the instruction of His Excellency the President. And you must make sure that every student wears masks. The CS used the forum to challenge Kenyan researchers to embark on post-COVID-19 recovery research to help the government make informed decisions about economic recovery. Research must now stop being a Kenyan issue. It must be interdisciplinary. It must be inter-institutional. And it shall be and must be relevant to the lives of our own people. Moving on, President Uhuru Kenyatta is encouraging the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution to focus more on the successful prosecution of high-profile cases, especially those involving misuse of public resources. The head of state says it's only through successful prosecution of such cases that the agency will retain the confidence of Kenyans. President Kenyatta spoke on Monday at State House Nairobi when he received the 2017, 2018 and 2018, 2019 performance reports from the Director of Public Prosecution, Nudin Haji. He said an effective and efficient criminal justice system will also attract investors, leading to the creation of jobs for Kenyan youth. On his part, Haji said the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution has prioritized corruption cases and involvement of subject experts from various fields, such as financial analysts, has enabled the institution to recover corruptly acquired public resources. Leaders from pastoralist communities have vowed to support the Building Bridges Initiative report. The leaders who spoke after a meeting with former Prime Minister Raila Odinga said the presentation they made during a public participation forum which included, among others, equity in resource allocation and protection of community land will be addressed. Raila said a three-member technical committee will be formed to address the gaps pointed out by the leaders. Leaders from pastoralist communities under the pastoralist parliamentary group and the Frontier Counties Development Council have reaffirmed their support for the Building Bridges Initiative report. Pastoralist support PPG. BBI. The entire region. It's generally very basic issues uh, that has no controversy or does not disadvantage anybody in the country. It's just more about our issues that we feel needed to be highlighted and that has been well taken. The turn of events follows a consultative meeting between leaders from Northern Kenya and former Prime Minister Raila Odinga at an Nairobi hotel. At no time did the governors give me any kind of ultimatum. Mm -hmm. I don't know where the media got this impression that I was given any uh, ultimatum. I was not given any ultimatum by the governors. Good. Raila said a three-member technical committee will be constituted to address concerns from leaders before the implementation of the BBI report. We have had a very cordial conversation with these representatives. This was the fourth meeting we've been having with them. And there is uh, quite an agreement over many issues. Raila says the document seeks to end historical marginalization by unlocking the economic potentials of northern kenya so those issues can and will be taken on board and they have appointed a representative three representatives from here who will actually sit down with the, the technical team to iron out some of those issues but this document is meant to deal with the critical issues affecting our country the leaders said they will be ready to support the document if issues like the protection of the community land, revenue allocation, equalization of funds, and the formation of a livestock marketing authority are addressed. Irene Mchuma Odim, Channel One.
And still on the BBI report, male governors have come out to oppose the recommendations contained in the Building Bridges Initiative report, which requires that women be nominated as deputies in the gubernatorial race. The male governors who maintain that women should be given a chance to compete with their male counterparts on equal footing warned that the move by BBI is unfair and dictatorial and against the spirit of the constitution. The debate on whether governors should elect women as their deputies in the gubernatorial race emerged during a meeting of governors in Naivasha to seek consensus in the BBI report ahead of the proposed referendum in June. Let the women come out and fight it with men. Yeah, they will succeed. The move was, however, opposed by their female counterparts who say that the clause should be allowed to sail through. Kitui Governor Charity Ngilu said the recommendation will help build capacity for women to take up leadership roles in future. It would be very good because you start building the women capacity and they also start to learn, you know, how to run for office and they'll go with you so that you kind of share the strength that you have and make sure that a woman running with you can then both of you can get elected. However, according to a section of male governors, the BBI proposal was flawed and unconstitutional. Led by Migori Governor Kodobado, they noted that women should be given a chance to compete with their male colleagues on a level field. There is a misconception that women cannot fight it on their own. That is a, a very, very big misconception. We have had in this country very, very powerful women who have fought and uh, succeeded in obtaining various seats. So long as the one is shall consider, I don't see any problem with it. And because he's saying as far as possible, you know, think, think deeply before you make your decision. The governors were, however, in agreement that the document needs further amendments to capture divergent views. Ben Chumba, reporting for Channel One News. In case you just joined us, this is Channel One News. We're taking our first short, quick break. But before then, let me appreciate Charles Osoro watching from Embakasi. You're saying, Ndania Show, mark me present. Uh, Toxic Sponye from Kericho, we are on, mark me present. Uh, Mary Lenjo, Dubai, watching. Uh, uh, Florence Mulu, Muluya. Kibra, Makina watching, Gilbert Ko H, you're watching live from Bomet County, Eriko Petro, you're watching from Homabi County. Of course, I'll be sampling some of your comments uh, and suggestions before the end of this uh, broadcast. Let's first take that break. Tonight on KBC Channel One. Grapevine, as usual, we are not disappointed. Uh, there are songs with a Nigerian artist, there's a Tanzanian artist, there's a Rwandan, Rwandese. Go on and do it high value to get your heaven and redeem my book. Just because you dress up a certain way, you are arrested. 10 p.m. Rings, baby. What you gotta do? On the next episode of Corner. Who make a unaka guilty? Vilo lukwa na zile file. Na uka wana zifiya. You are going to regret it. Na unani kama unaza kunfanya kama mojezo kodi exactly small small na misi fry your story. Girlfriends do stuff for their boyfriends all the time. Decent people call to cancel on you. Well, I'm glad we didn't meet because you're obviously a waste of time. Africa Cup of Nations brings us home to another exciting qualifier where Harambe stars host the Colasantes of Comoros Wednesday, the 11th of November at Kasarani. And that goal! And it is a goal! Coming on exactly 34 minutes, Johanna Omolo. Watch it live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1 at 7 p.m. as we continue to showcase Africa's based on your true sports partner.
Welcome back. Thank you for keeping me company. Moving on, former Arusha Urban Constituency Member of Parliament, God bless Lema, has been released from police custody in Kajado County unconditionally. The former Tanzanian legislator spent the night at Kajado Police Station, Kajado County, after he was arrested by Kenyan authorities at Ilbisil along Namanga Road. The immediate former Arusha Urban Constituency Member of Parliament, God bless Lema, has been granted permission to stay in the country under the asylum program. This is according to his lawyer, George Lushiri Wajakoya. Lema had entered the country seeking political asylum, claiming his life was in danger. Accompanied by his wife and their three children, Lema said he had already reached out to the United Nations High Commission for Refugee, UNHCR, seeking refuge. <laughs> ama kuzalishwa ama kupigwa sheria za kimataifa ziko wazi mtu huyo uwezo kumrudisha na kukimbia sheria za kimataifa ziko wazi na fikiri Kenya ni watu wameendelea katika sheria zaidi na ni watu wameendelea katika demokrasia ninaamini kwamba itakuwa na na mwelekeo mzuri dismissing claims he was a criminal on the run lema said he fears for his life and those of his family members due to his hard political stance kimbilia Kenya utafuta hifadhi ya maisha yangu sio kwa sababu nimekimbia njaa ama nimekimekosa chakula lakini maisha yangu na familia yangu yamekuwa bora sana kwa wakati huu lakini sikifikirii kuondoka nyumbani milele kwa sababu ya mambo ambayo yanaendelea Lawyer George Lushiri Wajakoya says his client is under the custody of UNHCR after being released unconditionally from Kajado Police Station The family is safe I took them Yesterday I whisked, I whisked the mother, the wife, and the four children into proper custody and I've now handed them over to UNCHR. So they are safe. The Tanzanian politicians' woes is the culmination of a crackdown on opposition leaders barely a week after President John Pombe Bagufuli took oath of office to serve for a second five-year term. Suleiman Yeri, Channel One News. Kisumu County Governor spouse Dorothy Nyongo has launched a campaign to promote the consumption of indigenous vegetables in a drive to contain cancer cases among the local communities. Mrs. Nyongo underscored the need for cancer patients to consider natural food rich in nutrients which are key to human health. These and more stories in newsmaking headlines in the counties. <laughs> Dorothy Nyongo has urged the local communities to be faithful in eating traditional foods and acknowledged partnerships with several organizations including the Rotary Club to help cancer patients during this pandemic. The governor's spouse pointed out that some food being consumed can become toxic for their bodies. She cited helpful local vegetables like collards, spinach, ododo, nightshade, strawberry, among others that are so handy to cancer patients. And Rotary uh, came on board to help us to uh, run with this campaign called Food for Good. So today we are managing to uh, feed uh, 50 households, uh, you know, for uh, at least a month. And we hope to continue this initiative and Kenya Union of Post-Primary Education Teachers, Uasingishu Branch, has demanded an apology from Education Cabinet Secretary George Magoha on alleged harassment of an education official in Uasingishu last week. The county's Kupet Secretary General Elijah Mayo said remarks uttered by Magoha in Langas Primary during the impromptu visit was demeaning to the official. <laughs> na tunauliza ma, ma, professor aombe msamaha kuna rabbles eh, ambazo zinatoka kwa ujenzi zinachotwa zikiwekwa kando na hii ni kazi ambayo inaelekea kila siku so wakati ule kazi hiyo ilikuwa inaendelea Elsewhere, a local chief in West Pokot County has taken the initiative of creating awareness on measures to prevent the spread of COVID-19 pandemic most residents in remote areas of the county have no idea of face masks. Weiwei location chief Matayo Rono has been around local markets sensitizing locals on the importance of taking prevention action against COVID-19. <laughs> Tunafunza hawa umuhimu ya kufaa hii kitu kwa sababu bila kufunza 
hata jua kwamba anafaa kwa sababu gani kwa hivyo tumesoyana na hawa na wananisikiliza ndio una ukiona hakuna karibu 100% kila mmoja anavaa barakoa in kakamega county a baby was electrocuted after touching a live wire the incident happened during a funeral of a family member the shocked residents claimed the child touched the wire while they were busy burying their departed member mvua inanyesha mtoto anaambiana viatu na yeye mwenyewe alikuwa connected kwa miguu Stima ikashika yeye. Kitambo tukumbuke pande hii mchezo ya watoto. Kustuka butua gafuru na buu mtoto amepatikana. Amekauka kwa waya. Meanwhile Nairobi County Assembly Majority Leader Abdi Guyo has slammed elected leaders in his home county of Isiolo for failure to forge a united front that would guarantee locals proper service delivery. Aguyo pointed out that the unending wango spitting area governor Mohamed Kuti against other elected members in both the National Assembly and the Senate only serves to derail development. Finally, Samburu County Finance Chief Executive Officer Dorcas Lekisinyal claims that demands raised by striking health workers have been amicably solved. Lekisinyal said health workers at the Maralal Preferal Hospital had demanded establishment of an oxygen plant and a fixed water supply at the hospital which have been addressed. She also added that the Maralal Youth Polytechnic had been fully renovated and converted into an isolation facility ready to serve COVID-19 patients. So far, COVID fund has spent 107 million out of the 228 million that was earmarked for COVID intervention. So of the 107 million spent, 8 million was spent in health. Unajoni ni mamu, ni kukaribu kwenda shule, na sitaki kwa na stress kukuhusu. Christy, hebu rudi shule edu. When Angela and Christy meet at the university, they are both somehow clicks. That is somewhere up there in the sky on his way to China. I'll never forget when he took us to Singapore. Wow, it was fun. Followed by a friendship that would defy their parallel backgrounds. Since you met a shower, good luck inside there. This new territory presents all manner of pasts as influence, temptation, family histories, and peer pressure set in. The rest of their lives become a story of love, survival. Wait, 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 wait. Please, ma'am, kubali tu story to Maliza and the home. Influence, backstabbing, jealousy, and revenge. Mambi lo tu kule stage mo nekana na minji minji plan mki kama pam tan. He decided to sneak from the hostel and go to the studio without consulting me or Tiff. Join us on Tempted the Campus Diaries as we explore this hilarious, never seen before drama. Hebu ni lipe pesa zangu ewe. With a touch to behold. A story of temptation. Next on. How could you even think of leaving your mother alone there? Don't you see, your mother could have wandered out into the streets or somewhere else. How could I help him escape when I, I have problems running my own life? Tell that to the police when they come looking for you. Oh my, he's dead. He's already dead. Because of her, I had to leave Tijuana. Because of her, I got kidnapped. And because of her, I lost Fabiola Valente. Hey, hey, help me, hey. But swear to me, you won't say anything to anyone. Because if you tell anyone, Francisco will send me to prison. El paraíso conocimos. In love Let's now shift focus to business. Residents of Nairobi metropolitan area are set to enjoy better commuting services following the rehabilitation and modernization of the Nairobi commuter rail. The renovation is among efforts by the government to address traffic snarl-ups in the capital city. The modernized rail service is due to be officially launched.
Traffic snarl-ups have been a major problem for key urban centers in Kenya, with an estimated 50 million shillings lost daily on Kenyan roads due to traffic jams. The government, through the Nairobi Metropolitan Services Improvement Project, seeks to decongest the roads through a revamped commuter train service. As we develop Nairobi City, as we look at the future of the Nairobi City, we had to make sure that uh, we integrate the road transport and the rail system. So this is one way which will greatly uh, reduce traffic jam. Remember right now there are some inconveniences. People have to take uh, Matatu from Soikimau into CBD. Part of the plan involves a rail master plan, which includes rehabilitating existing infrastructure and constructing new stations. The Nairobi Central Station will serve as the nerve center of operations, connecting to 10 stations in satellite towns, including newly built stations in Donholm and Pipeline. After renovation and rehabilitation of the stations, the Nairobi Central Station is projected to serve 150,000 people daily. Uh, a lot of people will appreciate it because of uh, the time that they will use in traveling, so the demand will be more. Currently, there are commuter train services on Nairobi Imaradaima Siokimau route, Nairobi Githurai Mwiki Kahawa Ruiru route, Nairobi Embakasi route, and Nairobi Kibera Kikuyu route. Betty Kiptum, Channel One Business. Moving on, Safaricom has reported reduced profit for the first time as government interventions to ease the cost of living amid the COVID-19 pandemic ate into the telcos earning. The telcos chief executive Peter Ndegwa said performance is mainly attributed to the decline in M-Pesa revenue after the government zero-rated charges for sending at least a thousand bob. Directives issued by Central Bank of Kenya for mobile money use aimed at reducing handling of cash included waiving of transaction fees for sending at least a thousand shillings. This zero rating impacted M-Pesa revenue, which Safaricom says declined 14.5% during the first half of their financial year that ended 30th of September 2020. Safaricom Chief Executive Officer Peter Ndegwa says M-Pesa transactions worth 1.76 trillion shillings down between April and September this year was zero rated. Voice revenue also declined 6.5% as the growth in customers and usage was offset by continued downward movement on the effective rate per minute. Active customers went up from 29.3 million to 30.3 million subscribers. Mobile data on the other hand grew 14.1% driven by sustained momentum in customer growth and usage. 4G devices using more than 1 GB in the network grew 60.6%. 6%. Total revenue declined 4.1% from 130 billion shillings to 125 billion shillings. Of this, 59.6 billion shillings was remitted to government in duties, taxes and license fees. Betty Kiptum, Channel One Business. Now, the process of assigning hard copy Papers and books when entering a building could soon come to an end after the launch of Hodi Hodi app. The app digitizes the visitor management process and leverages contactless technology to detect and report potential COVID-19 cases. The tech launched by Private Security Congress and Town Connect has a multifunctional interface that enables the guards to report any COVID-19 suspected cases. Hodi Hodi app allows security guards to collect key details such as ID, facial photos, and couplet numbers of those accessing residential and commercial buildings. Due to these challenges which are coming over, we need to talk about technology. We have been analog for quite some time and it is this uh, high time we move from analog to digital such that we are going to have uh, our guards, our employees, our families moving in the right direction so that we are not going to contaminate our people, contaminate our families and uh, contaminate our guards.
interesting invention. Elsewhere, Access Bank has officially launched operations in the Kenyan market, hoping to leverage the, mo the mobile money model and replicate the same in other African markets. Access Bank Kenya Country Manager David Aluko says the lender is keen on using Kenya as a gateway into East Africa and the African continent at large. Here are the details of this and other stories in our corporate briefs. According to Access Bank CEO Herbert Wigwe, the launch of Access Bank Kenya did not only bring the banking group closer to its vision of being the world's most respected African bank, but will also enable customers and other stakeholders to tap into the bank's extensive global network. Wigwe believes operations in Kenya will also translate to immense business opportunities for customers and competitive products. By the time we deploy our uh, robust IT platform, and uh, we unveil our digital services to the people, uh, we believe that we, sh we are in the position to bring in more people into the, in the formal banking system. Kenya is highly digital, so there's an area that we are going to expand in. You also look at the former transactional, we, was, we were localized in a particular places in terms of the regions, so we are looking at expanding various other regions. Meanwhile, the horticulture industry is optimistic that Kenya would seal a deal with the UK ahead of Brexit from January next year to guarantee undisrupted exports. This comes a week after Kenya and the United Kingdom announced conclusion after months of negotiations of a strategic economic partnership agreement that will support exporters to expand their presence in the UK and the European Union markets. We just want to have that assurity that come uh, January 1st, uh, we'll continue exporting into uh, the UK much more competitively than uh, all the rest of our competitors because when uh, a tariff comes in at 8% uh, for flowers, for example, and we are subjected to that, we become completely uncompetitive. Finally, unpredictable weather patterns, pests and diseases, Floods and below par rains are some of the challenges that local farmers have to grapple with in a bid to boost food production. To address the challenges, farmers are being encouraged to embrace crop and livestock insurance to cushion them against such unexpected eventualities. Our view is that the farmer is not going to be successful only because of insurance, but rather everything else needs to come into play. So they have to be using certified seeds, they have to be using the right fertilizer. Then the livestock that you are talking of, it's very important in the sense that you do not know when diseases will strike. So as a safety net, it's always good to, to, to have yourself covered. Moving on, Ethiopia is battling a new wave of locust infestation, one which the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization has warned as threatening food security in the Horn of Africa region. Five regions in Ethiopia are greatly inf affected by the infestation, and farmers in those parts are reeling from losses due to the expansive desert locust infestation. Here are those details and other stories from across the borders. The Food and Agriculture Organization says over 200,000 hectares of land in parts of Ethiopia have been damaged by the pests since January. The Desert Locust Control Organization of Eastern Africa that serves nine countries says Ethiopia and Somalia are the most affected in the region. It says the biggest challenge is controlling the pests and reliance on old equipment and the numerous uncontrolled breeding grounds. FAO warns that if the locust invasion in Ethiopia is not fully controlled, neighboring countries will most likely be hit by a second wave. Meanwhile, people in four food insecurity hotspots in parts of Burkina Faso, northeastern Nigeria, South Sudan and Yemen need urgent help to avoid sliding into farming. Blaming long-running conflict and a lack of humanitarian access to communities in need, climate extremes and the economic fallout of the COVID-19 pandemic, the World Food Programme warns that 16 additional countries also face a major food emergency in the next three to six months. Countries at risk include Afghanistan, the Central African Republic, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Haiti and Venezuela. Finally, the city of Cascais in Portugal has been using a bus turned mobile laboratory to provide the most vulnerable with fast and convenient testing for COVID-19. The innovative solution is but one of many measures taken by the Cascais authorities to deal with the virus spread.
The mobile lab was created to find out how many people have been in contact with coronavirus. The test is free for residents. Authorities mainly provide the service to people in the poor regions and those with low mobility. Carlos Carreiras, mayor of the city, says the government has provided masks, food and psychological support, which has allowed them to contain the rapid spread of the coronavirus, especially in the poorest neighborhoods. The road to the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations brings us home to another exciting qualifier where Arambe Stars host the Colasantes of Comoros on Wednesday, the 11th of November at Kasarani. Watch it live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1 at 7 p.m. as we continue to showcase Africa's based on your true sports partner. Betika proudly brings you Kenya vs. Comoros Afcon qualifier live on KBC Channel 1. Time to play now and we begin with basketball where seven foreign-based players were named in the national basketball team that will represent Kenya in the Afro basketball qualifiers in Kigali, Rwanda between the 26th and the 29th of this month. The team of 17 players named today by the Kenya Basketball Federation boss Paul Otula also includes 11 home-based players. The Kenyan team has been pulled in Group B together with Angola, Senegal and Mozambique and they will face Senegal in their first match. Kenya booked their ticket for the tournament by winning FIBA Africa Zone 5 pre-qualifier in Nairobi in January. The second round of the qualifiers will be held in February at a venue yet to be decided. The top three teams in the group will qualify for the biannual Africa Finals set for Kigali next year. Soccer now, national team Harambe Stars will miss the services of striker Michael Olunga and captain Victor Wanyama when they face Comoros in the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations qualifier this Wednesday here in Nairobi. The two players will not be available for the match due to COVID-19 restrictions in their respective countries. Wanyama, who plays for Montreal Impact in Canada, and Olunga, who turns out for Kashiwa Reiso in the Japanese J1 League, were among the professionals summoned for the doubleheader. Kenya will be seeking for their first win in Group G after they drew 1-1 against Egypt and Togo in the first two games. <laughs> Remember that match will be live right here, your true sports partner, KBC Channel 1. Elsewhere, Arsenal head coach Mikel Ateta has confirmed that midfielder Thomas Patey is said to have a scan on suspected thigh injury suffered during Sunday's 3-0 defeat against Aston Villa. Ole Watkins brace and an own goal from Bukaya Saka gave Villa the victory. Grealish put it on a plate for his good mate John McGinn. He's uh, looking at the heavens here. The offside decision. Barkley again behind him. Douglas. And Zlatan Ibrahimovic missed a penalty before scoring a late equaliser as Italian Serie A leaders AC Milan salvaged a point in a 2-2 draw against Hellas Verona. Rivals Juventus and Inter Milan both were held 1-1 in earlier games. First corner kick of the game goes the way of Verona. They've got plenty forward as well and off the crossbar it came and it's been turned in. And it's the man who got a brace in the victory over Benevento who has put Verona in front after five minutes at San Siro. Antonin Badak tapped it home from close range. What a start here. 
back. Got something not again, and it's deflected in. Oh, how about this? Well, the shot came in from Zakanyi. Rejuvenating in this game. Salamakas and Kessie was there, and in it goes. And Front Kessie applies the touch. The chance to level things up. Oh, my goodness. Wow. You... Brahim Diaz. Ibrahimovic is there again. This time is not to be denied. And Milan do now have their equaliser. Carlos Sola scored three penalties as Valencia thrashed Real Madrid in an extraordinary Spanish La Liga match that was played last evening. Meanwhile, halftime substitute Lionel Messi turned the game around for Barcelona as they beat Real Betis 5-2 for a first La Liga win in five games. Mbappé thinks about a shot, gets it onto the left foot. What a goal from Dembélé, who's man Dembélé with the finish. Look That's that the face. beauty, Graham. Look at Messi's face, Simon. That's the beauty. Off the Christian Teo. Teo puts it back, and there it is. It's the equaliser in stoppage time. Sanabria doesn't want to celebrate, doesn't want to risk his chances of a possible return. But it's Tony Sanabria with the equaliser for Betty's disappointment on the. <laughs> and uh, quite frankly, not even an off form Antoine Griezmann uh, having, let's say, bad luck in front of goal could possibly miss that. Well, no mistaking that one from Lionel Messi. He wanted a goal and he's got one. Boy, oh boy, what a penalty. It is. There's a chance for Betis though. It's cut back and absolutely buried by Lauren Maron. Ah, oh, lovely back healer from Sergio Roberto. Leo Messi! Bish bash bosh! <laughs> what a finish from Leo Messi. That's almost. A good game we have in prospect. Always seems to be exciting. They will be in the edge of the box. Might open up for the shot here. Karim Benzema! What a fine strike that was. Karim Benzema, like an absolute bullet to the top corner. And Ross into the arm of Lucas Vatu. And this time he squeezes it in. So Valencia level, he went the same way. So sending it wide to Maxi Gomez. Ball into the middle and nearly an own goal and it still might be, but it's scrambled away by Varane. What a sequence that was. <laughs> As now Vass sends the ball into Maxi Gomez. The support bizarre manner have the lead. An own goal from Rafa Varane who and still a chance and it must be Canyon Lee what a block by Ramos but what's been given here it's another penalty scores he went the other way this time Courtois guessed that he would it was Ramos challenging Musa and now the referee is blowing a whistle for it's just been a sensation and he puts it exactly in that bottom right corner he has a On that very sporty weekend, we wrap up Channel One News Hour. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching and keeping me company. Uh, I also should appreciate Charlton Yakwar from Game Nyagonda. Uh, I can see Florence from Kibra uh, watching, Rose Peter watching, uh, Mike Ngari tuned in from Nyeri. Uh, Geoffrey watching from Moyes Bridge and also Usa Baba Usu. Uh, watching live from Sensi, Moyale Sub County. On behalf of everyone who has made this broadcast a success, including my director, Amos uh, Ongweri, thank you so much. Do have a blessed night. Irene Chumodim is coming up next with the latest weather. Good evening and a very warm welcome to Channel One Weather Updates. I hope you're well today. Monday it is 
and most parts of the country are tonight experiencing wet conditions and in the capital this is over several places the lake basin region and western sectors are currently experiencing the same over several places and that is accompanied with thunderstorms the coldest towns tonight are Kericho and kitale temperatures stand at 11 degrees celsius and that is how the nights will be tomorrow we're waking up to rains across the country right from mandera marsabit garissa moyale moving all the way to lodua samburu and also the western sector kakamega bungoma kitale and also kisumu it will also rain in nairobi meru and nyeri the coastal strip will experience showers during the morning hours and that will be over several places it will be sunny in nakuru and kisi and also narok will experience sunny intervals and this will change during the afternoon hours there will be an increase of wet conditions across the country the lake basin region and western sector will experience showers accompanied by thunderstorms over several places the northeastern will experience showers over several places and this will be limited to marsabit garissa and sololo also the coastal strip will continue to experience wet conditions the southeastern lowlands will in the afternoon experience sunny intervals but there will be scattered wet conditions that will also spread to nairobi meru and nyeri the northwestern will mainly experience sunny intervals in the afternoon and now let's have a look at temperatures this is it the highest will be experienced in lodua at 32 degrees celsius here in the capital we're looking forward towards highs of 24 degrees celsius and for you in Mandera, temperatures have gone down highs of 31 degrees celsius will characterize your tuesday up next is the international forecast do have a good night see you tomorrow God. Vera Beauty College. Vera Beauty and Fashion College with branches in Nairobi, Eldoret, Thika and Meru. Did you know that we are a TVET approved institution? We offer courses in fashion design, interior design in soft furnishing, event decoration, flower arrangement, event planning, hairdressing, barbering and dreadlocks.